Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Herbie's Cooking Corner for February 7th. 2023. I am, of course, Herbie Allen, and I am joined as always by my wonderful co facilitator, Twinkling Tori. How are you, Tori? I'm okay. Herbie, how are you? I'm doing just fantabulous as always. Well, yeah, not as tired today, and for some reason I was up since before six this morning, so I think something is wrong. All right. And you know today, the date and everything. I know. It's really strange. You must be getting sick. I must be. Today we are going to do a uh, southern fried chicken, the oven type. I could have done one that requires actual like pan frying or deep frying, but I thought I'd uh, tackle one that uh, anybody might feel comfortable tackling. So that is on our agenda today. Couple things. First of all, I did just get done uploading the bread video to the YouTube channel for last week's call and the video includes an extra. That's right. You get to hear what happened after the bread rose for the second time and the final results of the bread. So, so I'm how not was the tell bread? You on here. Oh no, you gotta go watch the video. That mean It is, isn't it? You hear the people who can watch the video, but not until after you've watched today's call. I'll give everybody a week to watch it and then we'll talk about the bread next week. So There you go. So they could go watch it once we're done here. Exactly. And um, it's either uploaded or still in the process of uploading because YouTube, the way it works is it has to process and all that junk first. So if it's not there right this moment, that's fine because you've still got this call to listen to. And then we got this one. I'll also get French Toast uploaded later today and start uploading some of the past ones as well so we can uh, get some more cooking calls on the channel. So today was originally supposed to be a day for making a dill pickle soup. That is not the case. We're going to do a southern fried chicken instead. So reschedule this one, the soup. Yes, we did reschedule the soup for the 21st, I think. Yes. That sounds right. If you missed it, then uh, last Friday they uh, had invited me on the Albany, Georgia chapter to talk about uh, various cooking recipes. And uh, that was a lot of fun, so glad I was able to do that. But uh, now let's get on with this recipe. One of the things that this recipe calls for is crushed cornflakes. And we have dealt with this before, but last time... It was for chocolate chip crunch cookies. This time they are going to go to a more noble purpose, and that is to help us fry chicken. I prefer the cookies. You prefer the cookies? Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, the crunch in the cookies works to a point, but I don't know about that one. But then there's so, plenty of cornflakes. You can do both. There is. So how it's going to work, guys, is during the cooking part, I am going to take questions strictly on what I am doing. If you've got alternatives or anything like that, please, please hold off until after Tori's tips. If you do not get a chance to mention them on the call, then you can always email me through community at acb.org and I will try to, well, I, I will include them for the following call. But uh, I want to keep things a little bit more narrowly focused. So for now, when we do questions, then it's going to be strictly on what I've done so far. And then we will have time for alternatives and other fried chicken recipes, which there are a gazillion out there. So let's get things started. So we are going to need two mixing bowls, one for our wet ingredients one for our dry ingredients. This is pretty typical of a fried chicken recipe because of the fact that you use one bowl for your dipping and another bowl for your rolling, i.e. you dip the chicken into the liquid mixture and then you roll it into the batter. So more often than not you are going to see two different bowls for recipes like this. So let's get out the cornflakes. This is a lot bigger box than I thought I was getting, but that's okay. See, I told you there's plenty for both the chicken and the cookies. There is. You can uh, come over here and make the cookies if you would uh, like. Oh, I'll um, just we're doing... the device. Exactly. We're, we're doing cooking on here for a while. This is Herbie's Cooking Corner, not Herbie's Bake Shop. And, uh... 
So, so we're going to do some pure cooking for a while. That is going to be it. So yes, we'll be doing some actual cooking next week too, not to baking. How do you like that? This calls for one cup crushed cornflakes. I am going to actually get out my two cup measuring cup just because the amount of cornflakes per cup is, considering the crushing, is, well, not quite even because the you get more when you crush them. So hopefully that, what I said, makes sense. And if it doesn't, we'll just do it like okay. If you don't have a two cup measuring cup, that's fine. You can just use uh, one cup, but I think you're going to need two cups of cornflakes rather than the one that it calls for. So let's pour out these cornflakes. And uh, cornflakes come in a box, typical cereal box, your box and package inside a box. These are just the Kellogg brand. Okay, I'm going to set the in back in the original box and then we're going to put a clothespin on them first so that way they will stay fresh and i'll leave them out in case i need more but hopefully that will not be the case but so we've got plenty here should i need them and uh, crushing cornflakes again something we've done on this call before so i'm going to get one of my mixing bowls and i'm going to hold the cup Actually, put the cup inside it, so I'm going to use my hands to crush, 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 crush. I mean, with them all nice and crumbly, and the nice thing about doing them over the bowl is any spillage is going to go right into the bowl, which is where they need to be anyway. And so you can hear them going into the bowl. Okay, and I'm kind of taking some out with my hands too and crushing them that way. Okay, let's pour the remainder in. I think I'm going to want a little bit more than what that calls for. Especially because I did get quite a bit of the chicken to do. So got to bear in mind, um, when they say a cup of crushed, they mean a cup once it's crushed. Yes. And that will actually be more than it is when if you measure them when it's not crushed. Because of them being bulkier exactly. when they're not crushed. Okay, so I poured in a lot of extra. I'm just going to pour this into the bowl and then set aside and now I'm going to use my hands to finish the crushing process. I'm going to reseal the bag as soon as I find my clothespin. Oh dear. Of course. Now it uh, disappeared on me. Oh, there it is. So I thought we'd have a uh, phenomenon. <coughs> but uh, like I explained some of my uh, video extra last week where I wanted to find my rolling pin and I couldn't and then I ended up finding it after the fact. So. Alright, maybe and now I have extra cornflakes here, but that's fine. I don't know if there's really such a thing as extra because... I mean, we don't want to use like the entire box, but I think I did pour in a lot more. Oh well. We will find out if I use too much or not with the ratio of chicken that I got. So that is that for the chicken. Next. Cornflakes. You said that is that for the chicken, but that is that for Yeah, 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 yes. That's right. So the other thing I've done, by the way, is I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees. So it's sitting there ready to go. So we need a third cup all-purpose flour. I'm going to just... You know what? I'm going to make it easier because I can. I'll use a cup because why not? Um, With how much you've increased the amount of cornflakes for how much chicken you're using, you probably do need a cup. Exactly. So I'm going to get out my flour container and make sure I'm pointed over the right bowl here. And actually, I don't need to point over. We're just going to scoop out 
The disadvantage of the two cup measuring cup though, by the way, folks, I should mention is it's not good for scooping. And so you only, my advice is only use those if either A, you're doing water or and B, if you are really good with pouring. So if uh, you're not good with pouring, then you may want to stick with your standard measuring cup sets that will let you scoop instead in most cases and that is that okay we need a teaspoon of salt so where is my salt okay uh, let's see here there it is oh, i thought it was going to get helpful hints today Oh, and of right. course, because you're increasing the other ingredients, you're going to need to increase that too. Yep. So, and this calls for a teaspoon of salt, I believe. So what we're going to do is actually do two teaspoons and call it good. Salt is one of those things that you can overdo. So you do want to be careful. Okay, that's just a half teaspoon. Where is my full teaspoon? I'll tell you folks, things have a nasty habit of disappearing on me right when I need them. It's like they know that uh, they're going to get used. All right, well, I see my tablespoon. You know what? Then we're just going to do several smaller teaspoons and call it good. I've got the salt shaker here open to like the sieve. And I'm just going to pour some out. Some salt shakers will actually let you open them instead. And that can sometimes make scooping a lot easier. This one will not. And I'm using sea salt, by the way, because it is a healthier salt than the uh, regular stuff and tastes the same anyway. So... At least as far as I can tell it does, at least I, I don't know that I could tell you a difference between uh, sea salt and uh, the other stuff. That being said, again, you can st you still can use too much of it. Filling a fried chicken recipe, you can definitely use a little bit more than what you would use for baking. Okay, do we need anything else in the dry ingredients department? Ah, one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons ground red pepper. So I'm just going to be really careful with the pepper because that is again something you can overdo unless you like spice of course and I'm just going to pour some pepper into the mixture and maybe just a tiny bit okay so before we go on to our wet ingredients does anybody have any questions on what we have done so far so Diane. My, let, let's see Oh, oh, not my first guess. Okay. I wonder if, if this recipe might be fun to play with a little, like adding some other dry ingredients, like maybe a little garlic powder. Yes, you could easily do that. Add some garlic powder or the chili powder if you want chili chicken, that kind of thing. Yeah. Paprika okay, would also be another good one to add. Yep. I'm sorry. What? Oh, paprika? What? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was actually just thinking about that. Um, I wouldn't add like sugar or anything like that. No, but, but, stuff, but stuff like, you know, paprika, regular pepper, chili powder, garlic, that kind of thing for a bit of extra flavor. Yeah, that would work. Yep. Um, you could also try substituting things like garlic salt in place of the regular salt. Yeah. And uh, um, so, yeah, there are definitely some things that you can do to play with this recipe. Now, one of my favorite types of fried chickens to do, though they can be a little bit uh, fun, is the buttermilk ones because buttermilk is really good at absorbing some of the flavors and really making them blend but uh, that means standing there and frying usually or and it also means letting the chicken absorb the buttermilk and so eventually i'll tackle one of those but 
Not well, today. letting the chicken absorb the buttermilk is a good reason, but the frying, um, actually, nine times out of ten, if it's a fried chicken recipe, it can be adapted for the oven. Yep. Well, some of the fried re chicken recipes I have for the buttermilk ones actually call for both. You initially fry them to get it, like, started, and then they finish cooking in the oven, so. Yeah, but you could just do but, it all in the oven if need be. Yes. Yes. As we have all another right. raised hand. In Zoom. Telephone number 512 ending in 841. None of my That's usual me. suspects. Um, I just have a quick me. question. I mean, um, I'm sorry, what? I didn't well, catch no, your name. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm Randa in Texas. And my quick question is can I do this in a air fry oven without having to change anything, or do you know? I have honestly never tried this in an air fryer, but. I, it theoretically, should be you might have to so, adjust the cooking time a little bit and temperature, but the actual process of making it would be similar. Okay, yep. thank you, because it is an air fry oven. It's not just an air fryer. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I get it. And some you might want to check with some air fryers might have different recommendations on different settings to use for various yeah. things too so check with that i ha for instance i have a smaller air fryer unit that cooks a lot is a much better air fryer than my bigger air fryer unit but the bigger air fryer unit has a very good grill plate that i like so all right thank you and uh by the way just a reminder for those of you in clubhouse as well you can also participate by raising your hand do we have any other questions requesting to speak not at this time to speak yeah sorry all okay. right, I'm so used to Club Deck because on Club Deck it actually is called raising your hands. So. Yeah, but in Clubhouse it's request to speak and then you get put on stage and then you can speak. Well, very good, very good. So next thing that's interesting about this recipe is uh, we're going to go into our wet ingredients and this calls for egg whites. So let's talk about those. You can get the actual egg and separate out the yolk from the whites, but what I did is just get the carton of egg whites because it's a lot easier and yes no I realize yolk. it's no yolk and I realize yes it can be more expensive well eggs are expensive so right now it's cheaper to get the egg whites believe me but uh, we're talking about two dollars versus four dollars but the you know again when it comes to expense and all that it really depends on two things skills and how often you're going to use the stuff i'm not one to always use the egg whites so getting a carton is just fine for me but if you do egg whites on a daily basis you might prefer to do the uh, actual real egg let's do this though in the meantime hey google how many cups is three egg whites sorry i don't have any information about that but i found something else do you want to know how much egg white three eggs is? No. Okay. So this calls for three egg whites. The fact though that we don't have an exact measurement is not a big deal because we're not baking, we're frying. And so the part of the idea is for it to, of course, to blend with the milk. And part of it is to just create a coating so that way the According batter can According to my Lady A, it's about a third of a cup. Okay. So... All right, Lady A is useful. I don't have her plugged in out here. Because she's... I've got one right beside me, so I asked yep. her for you. Okay. Oh, this is a time when uh, Lady A outperformed Google, guys. So you heard it right here on live... Whatever this is. So I've got out my... Uh, at least I think it's my third cup. This one does not have labels. I don't know if I can find my other one. Ah... Okay, so even though these measuring cups do not have labels, I can tell now which is the third cup by stacking them all do, together. Do bear in mind, though, that you have increased your dry ingredients, so we'll need to increase your wet ones. Yes, and I was going to do two-thirds of a cup. Just making sure you remembered. Yep, why well, thank you. You're welcome. I, I kept you around for some reason. No. I know, I'm um, so useful sometimes. Yeah. Only sometimes. sometimes. Exactly. Now, the question is, what can I do with the egg whites? Okay, so the fun thing, and 
I won't call this a blind frustration because I've known sighted people to have this problem too, is uh, you do something with something and then you forget what you did with it. Okay. The funny one so, is when my, when my sighted husband does that and then I find it. Yep. All right. So I know I did not place it on top of the stove because that would be a problem. Did I place it over here? Yes. Okay. What I did is I realized that I was holding it when I was looking for my measuring cup. So I placed it on the counter that the, uh, holds the cupboard for the measuring cups. So process of elimination there, guys. So the egg whites come in the carton, as you can hear. And uh, this carton has one of those lids on it that uh, has one of those interesting seals that is going to be a challenge. All right, there we go. So I had to kind of get it started with the turning by kind of squeezing a little bit. And now here we go. What's underneath? Let's see. Do we have a plastic ring? No, we do not. Okay. Some cartons have the extra plastic film. These do not. So we're going to do two thirds cup egg whites. And this is over a separate mixing bowl. And now I'm going to put the lid back on and again, I'm holding the cup over the bowl so that way any excess goes off in there. And next is the milk. And I think this calls for a half cup of milk. Cup. So I'm quarter cup. Okay, it's well, we'll just cup. use the half cup. Yep, we'll use a half cup since I'm doing extra. So I've got my measuring cups over here. Milk, again, comes in your typical milk container. You probably know this one without me uh, describing it to you, but uh, one way you can know it's milk. Well, there's actually writing on these bottles. and they... Unfortunately, it's not all print letters, but I think it says milk and maybe even what type it is. I don't know. So I've got the milk open and we're going to pour that in, except I used a smaller cup than I intended. Okay. So we'll put in a little bit of extra. And we're going to put that in the sink. But the other advantage, by the way, too, guys, with the white egg whites is you don't have to deal with the egg shells. So there is another advantage with that too if you are not comfortable with cracking eggs and I honestly don't know I mean there are a lot of techniques you can do to separate the whites from the yolks and uh, they work but you know what I'll just buy the carton it's a lot easier and just yeah. an aside the cracking egg thing is not only a blind person thing either because my dad cannot crack eggs all right well, there you go so yeah, there's a lot of, you know, we're, I hopefully on this call, we're missing, we're really making people rethink about what the difference between blind and sightedness and really, you know, evaluating that just because you're blind actually doesn't mean anything. He's actually gone to his next door neighbor in the past to get them to crack an egg for him because nobody else was available. So really I should have lightly beaten the eggs before putting in the uh, milk, though I suspect that's more so if you're separating out the egg whites. Yeah, probably because the egg white mixture would be lightly beaten already, really. Exactly. So I'm going to whisk this real quick. And uh, we're done. Because it's supposed to lightly beat it anyway. So that is that. Now we're going to dip well, the chicken into the mixture. So first of all, I'm going to move this box of cornflakes out the way. And so what we are to do is to do a, uh, I think it's the greased cookie sheet. And if you really wanted to feel adventurous, you could use actual oil to slightly grease the sheet. Yeah, it says cooking sheet coated with non-stick cooking spray. What yes. it actually says. And that's what we're going to use. This calls for two pounds of chicken breast. And uh, the boneless kind, well, actually it doesn't really specify, but you can usually tell with these recipes if it says like skin side down or whatever. This one does not. I'm going to actually use chicken thighs because we like those better. Uh, so you can use either one. 
So that's how we're adapting this recipe. And I got a pack. I think it's actually a little bit more than two pounds, which is why I did the uh, extra liquid stuff. Well, part of it was on accident too, but uh, there we go. But if you've got Any extra co stuff from doing the coating, you can just put it aside and do it with something else later. Exactly. All right. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done so far? Just raise those little hands or hit those little request to speak buttons and uh, our wonderful uh, hostesses will get to you. So far, I'm not seeing any raised hands in Zoom and Miss Kayla doesn't have her hand raised, so I guess we're... All right. No well, she is telling the truth. Well, she is actually telling the truth, guys, when she says she doesn't see any raised hands because she actually has a little bit of vision, so... Um, yep. But so also, we, we, we don't we need know. to change language just because people can't see anyway. That's right. No, we, we don't. <laughs> we don't, but... In fact, we actually hate when people do that. Yes. Oh, now we have a raised hand. Oh, we have a raised hand. Okay, I don't know if it's on the language comment or the original thing, but uh, we're going to find out. Who have we got? We have Melinda. So Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Hey, good morning, Harvey and everybody. Hi, Melinda. Good morning. Harvey and Rachel, we are doing That's the plan. That, that chicken sounds so good. Right now, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm showing everybody how to make it so uh, they can uh, give you can give it a try, get the ingredients, and uh, uh what if uh, our uh, wheelchair, if our kitchen was wheelchair accessible? But well, maybe you can well, get someone to make it for you. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll see. <laughs> yeah, anyway, did you have a Good yeah, morning, everybody. Just wanted to say good morning, though, and uh, All right. it was a good class today. All right. Thanks, now, Melinda. Thank you for being here. Yep. Now, okay, so I a disclaimer here. I've never cooked from within a wheelchair, though I've certainly been lazy a few times and sat in a wheeled chair to do things. So... Um, I do speak from a little bit of experience from this, but if your kitchen is not wheelchair accessible, you might be able to consider other alternatives. Like if you wanted to make the chicken, you know, could you at least have somebody bring out the ingredients to a dining room table and you do the measuring and whatnot, and then they bring the bowls back into the kitchen or something so they like that. They just do, know, the, do the chicken They part. could just do the fetching and carrying and stuff. Exactly. So they could just do the carrying for you and yeah. So that, so there might be some ad adaptation options out there that at least you can do part of it, if uh, nothing else. So this is a pretty standard, this is a pretty basic recipe, so, you know, it's not uh, too bad, even if you just did the dry ingredients. Yep. Okay, anybody else? Not at this time. All right, so I'm going to dip the chicken into the liquid. So I've gotten out a pack of chicken thighs. This is the only chicken that I have at the moment, so it makes it very easy to identify. You can tell a difference between chicken thighs and chicken breasts. It's a little bit uh, fun because you're having to feel through the package and those things don't usually have a barcode, but you can tell like chicken breasts are usually a little bit more bulkier than the chicken thighs. So that's how you can tell. But be prepared to be flexible in case you are wrong. The other challenging one can be like chicken thighs that have the bone in versus chicken thighs that are boneless. But uh, they well, do feel slightly different. that would be a bit more complicated. Well. But yes. I don't think it would make much difference as to whether you're using thighs or breasts. No. But you can tell a difference with the package. You can kind of feel the bone through the package if you press down a little bit. So, Yes. Um, and now that we're doing this, uh, yeah, we can talk about language and uh, all that. Good language here, but well, we'll talk about bad language. Well, it's really appropriate language. 
Yes. Well, I think this still constitutes bad language because, like, you know, you know, I, I remember my PE coach in sixth grade, and this is the first time I'd encounter this. We were talking about TV, and I said that I watch TV, and he wanted to know, how do I watch TV? So ever since then, I got into the habit of, around him at least, saying, you know, I listen to the TV because, you know, it was... Yeah, I, I wasn't so flexible. I had a... Um, somebody, when I was w w waiting to go in an... Um, in an ambulance somebody asked me who oh, are all these dvds i said mine they said how do you watch them i said i just do they said but you're blind i said i have ears don't i they said wouldn't that be listening to which i replied do you go online and t talk to your friends on me on um, messaging services and stuff they said yes i said but that's typing isn't it because you're using your hands you know that is I didn't have that ability for that argument back then because this is in 1995 and there was no AOL Instant Messenger, but uh, that is actually a very good one to try. I'm going to try that on somebody at one time. Um, shut that being off. said, if you're... I bet Sorry. it did. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, we do have... Uh, Kayla has her hand raised now, so is this an appropriate time to take questions or... Oh, I suppose so. I, I, I suppose nice. so. Yes, it's an oh, appropriate okay. time, Allison. You're fine. Mm, go <laughs> ahead, Kayla. Okay, well, let us know who we've got over there. All right. <clears throat> At first, we have Tony and Cheryl. I sent you a un a. I allowed you to come up on stage, so hopefully you're able to make your way up here. Hi, Tony. All right. Go ahead, Tony. Okay, good morning. Can you use chicken wings or chicken legs for that, too? Don't see why not. I don't see why not. Again, I don't know how recipe was... I mean, I, I mean, the, the recipe calls for... You have to adjust your cooking for, time. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, of course, this recipe was designed, of course, for, like, boneless chicken. So, but, you know, theoretically, mm -hmm. I don't see why it would you not could, you work. Could... And... You could technically do it, it's just that you would have to adjust your cooking time um, to allow for the, the fact that you're using a diff uh, the boned chicken and the different size chicken and stuff, um, and it would obviously change the results of exactly how the coating comes out, but it could technically be done. Okay, so if you don't have cornflakes, what else could you use? Could you use breadcrumbs? Yep. You can use breadcrumbs. Right. Again, it's going to taste different. Um, yeah, but it would work as a coating. Yep. Okay. And I have cool. definitely done fried chicken recipes with breadcrumbs as a coating. Yeah, uh, now... Go ahead, Tony. I'll tell Go you... On, Harvey. Uh, Go on, oh, Harvey. okay, so... Now, first of all, I realize that you're Tony the Tiger, so don't use Frosted Flakes for this. Um, <laughs> what oh, okay. um, the other thing, and okay, I don't know if this has been everybody else's experience, but back when I did the physical shopping, the, one of the things that courtesy clerks struggled to find was breadcrumbs, even though you tell them it's in the baking aisle. At least that's where it has been in our stores, and uh, they seem to struggle with that, so... There's a you might have a lot easier. Crumble Make bread. Sure. All right. Yeah, Thank you, just crumble bread. Just instead of um, crumbling cornflakes, crumble bread. And if you make, if you toast the bread first, it ha does it even better. Yeah, but that's work. I didn't that's say work. it was a labor-free workaround. No, did I? I, I mentioned the work around, so you know, work was implied. Fair I have made I... crumbs before. <laughs> All there right. you go. See, Tony's not afraid of work. <laughs> All right. Well, good for you, Tony. Um, you can come to my house afterwards. All right. Thanks, Tony. We have another hand over here. Yes, okay, ahead, uh, Cheryl, Kayla. I believe, right? Um, nope, she hasn't come up, but Sue raised her hand, and she's up here. Hi, Sue. All right. Hello. I'm enjoying this very much. Um, I actually do use a wheelchair all the time. And just for a tip, what I find easier is to kind of get all of my 
eyes together. Like, take that first 10 minutes. Get everything out that I'm going to need. Get it on the counter. Um, and then just start. Because it just seems to streamline the process for me. And it, it everything's right there then. I don't have to go rummaging and moving throughout the kitchen in my wheelchair and getting all nasty. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, I don't I don't know if this is something uh, you'd be interested in. I realize that uh, you are um, new to this. So, I, you know, uh, um, but it's something to think about. But one thing I because I, I don't have any experience with this myself, but it'd be very interesting to put together, you know, if somebody or want to do a panel on cooking and how to adapt your cooking with multiple disabilities, because that's something I cannot relate to myself because I just have the one um but uh, that is a very good tip there uh, susan yeah thank you, get, you very you much get, for coming up and sharing sue, that sorry. sue <laughs> not susan i'm yikes and i should know better because my mom goes by sue as well so <laughs> but there's no hope for me anyway so no it's all good. there's no hope for him don't mind him. Yeah, am I unmuted? This is Cheryl, and I had trouble with. My you phone. are unmuted, and so uh, guys, before you before Cheryl talks, I just want to mention we are being invaded by Texas again today because uh, she's from Texas, I'm from Texas, and we had a caller earlier from Texas. So, uh, and this is a Southern Fried Chicken, so I think that's very appropriate. All right, Cheryl, go ahead. I have a question. Um, I just got on late. I'm running a little behind this morning, and so what was the frying pan? you were you used uh, to put this in was it just like a we're not frying this this is going in the oven okay so you just and use the nine by 13 uh, like this to put it in? so basically yes. let's, yep so in fact i just put this in the oven and we're gonna go set the timer hey google set the timer for 15 minutes all right, 15 minutes. So, right, now. good. This uses a cookie okay, sheet. Okay, well, uh, my I mean, Google came on. What was really that? Weird. My Google came on. Oh, oh she was just uh, you must have me on speakerphone. <laughs> that, that's that's a danger. Speak. You, you yeah, must have yeah. me on speakerphone there. I'm sorry. Well, you're, 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 your Google timer is... Uh, anyway, so this calls for a cookie sheet with a nonstick spray. So that's what we used. You could also use a 13 by nine pan, especially if you have less chicken, but this does call for flipping. So cause what we're going to do is we're going to bake it for 15 minutes, flip the chicken and bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. And, and actually, so. if you're not that great at flipping, then it might be an idea to use a 13 by nine pan or a casserole type dish because of the higher sides. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was uh, going to tell you, uh, I have the same problem of misplacing my ingredients all the time uh, when I'm uh, cooking. You know, you said even sighted people do that, but I ultimately find it, and it's usually in really strange places, or it's usually is because I'm moving real fast and not thinking what I'm doing at that time. You know, I'm thinking of moving on to the next thing. And yep. so that's, yep. a, that's a common thing of losing things. Uh, in one of the times when I was at a rehab instructor, uh, they had suggested I have a tray to put everything on. And so I, uh, I do have some sight and I put a piece of paper towel on the dark colored tray. And that seems to help uh, find uh, where certain things are with a white background and some things with a light background. But I make sure like uh, if I'm uh, finishing with say the celery that I want, like I made a real good recipe for chicken salad Sunday. And I made sure when I finished Get the amount of celery I wanted. I put the, I put it up as I do it. Yep. Thanks. All for right. The tip. Thanks, and, Cheryl. Uh, I must admit, I've heard of. Yep. You're. Thank you, Cheryl. That's great tips. And by the way, you know, I've heard of uh, ice cream sundays, but I've never heard of a chicken salad sunday. So, um, there, there's a new it's concept. Not a chicken salad sunday. It was just chicken salad itself. Chicken salad spread. She said that oh. she shared the chicken a chicken salad recipe some day. Oh. oh, sorry. Oh. I talked to that, but I made it. I made it Sunday afternoon. It took a while because I had to cut up all the ingredients: the grapes, the celery, the chicken, and cut up everything by hand. So, so yeah, you, you just, just. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> hey, but, hey, hey, you know, there's another homino, homophone word uh, there. You know, I don't think Mary listens to these calls, but Sunday and Sunday because they are spelled differently, but they mean two different things. All right. 
I was just playing with you there, Cheryl. I knew what you meant. Okay. Um, anyway, well, talking, you know, Texas. Okay. Houston. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Thanks, Cheryl. All right. Do we have any other hands? Great participation, guys. Not at the moment. All right. I'm surprised we've not heard from our usual suspects today. So I guess since we're not baking, you know, uh, um, is he even here? I I have no idea. Um, but uh, all right. Um, he'll come oh, back. No, he's baking. not even here. Okay, th th that explains that. Yeah. And we're hearing somebody's jaws, so. And um, it's not mine, but if you are an eloquence user and you have a big bassy speaker, that is you. That just unmuted, so. Well, Cheryl has her hand raised again. Do you want to? Uh, uh, we yes. can take Cheryl. Okay. My question is, what do y'all serve as a side dish with this chicken usually? Mashed potatoes? Ah! Uh, you know, I am so glad you asked that because I'd completely forgotten about that. We're going to do rice, but you can do anything that you want. Mashed potatoes, corn. But uh, the wifey asked me to do rice, and so uh, let's get that started. So what rice what are, are you doing? Are you doing wild rice or brown rice or what? We're going to do brown rice, but... Uh, and uh, this is going to be a good uh, brown rice recipe, actually, because we're going to do brown rice and then I'm going to make it though into a garlic brown rice and we're going to add some garlic powder and butter to the rice mixture so um, thank you for that Cheryl I had completely forgotten so do you get recipes from a particular website or are they family recipes so I get my recipes from a number of sources. In this case, I have a lot of recipes that I got from a friend a long time ago, and I kept them around, and so I've done a lot of recipes from that, that source over the year. But years, you can definitely find them all over the place. So, um, but that's... Um, and then there are some recipes that I have gotten from the internet, some I've gotten from Tori, so I, and, uh, I just collect them from we've all got over. Some Sheila's calls. Yeah. Yep. Sheila has a great recipe swap call. In fact, the next one is tomorrow evening. So that is at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you join her for that. And uh, she does have an email list where you can get all her previous recipe documents as well. So... That is another great source for recipes. So, while you're putting your rice on, shall I give them the couple of tips I've got for those who might have allergies uh, or dietary restrictions? Well, let me talk about the rice first real quick, and then that, that way you can correct me when I get everything wrong. And then All we'll right. get into the tips. So... Um, we want to do two, roughly two cups of water per cup of rice, but really yeah, I find that I use a lot more water than the two cups, but we will start with the two cups. So I've gotten out a pot and I've set it on a stove burner and I'm going to fill my two cup measuring cup up with water and I like to use filtered water, but uh, you don't have to because that means it's going to get boiled anyway. I'm spilling some. Okay, that's where some of my water goes is on the floor. That really helps. Balancing, though, can be a tricky thing. I'm going to add in a little bit of extra. And then we're going to get out the package of rice. Brown rice is a little bit, you know, is more denser than your white rice. So it's going to absorb the water more. And is it brown you're using? Yes. That will be why it's more than the two cups that you need, because it's like about two cups yep. for the white, but with the brown, you often need to add more. Yep. But the brown rice is the healthier one, so... Absolutely. That's what I use. Yep. All right. Do I have scissors? Do I have scissors? Scissors. I do have scissors. So Where this is a brand new package. Yeah, they were. Yeah. 
So this bag is one of those that's completely sealed. So I'm going to just cut along the top and I'm going to get out my measuring cup here and uh, make sure it's actually completely dry. And we're just going to do a cup of rice. I'm going to get this uh, water starting to boil because I don't mind pouring in the rice to a boiling water pot. But if you do not feel comfortable doing that, you can certainly pour in the rice first and then turn on your burner. Just, you'll have to give yourself extra time, obviously, but uh, Okay, so I'm going to get out the, get the rice here. And so what we're going to do is, well, very carefully pour the stuff and I'm spilling, as you can hear. Okay. So I'm... I'm going to do a cup of rice. All that trying to pour without spilling stuff is why I always put it all in the pot before I put the burner on. Yep, but okay, there we go. So wow. All right, so we're having a rice disaster here, guys, but uh, thankfully most of it's going into the sink, so we can deal with that a little bit later. I'm taking the cup now over to the stove, and we're going to pour into the water and just kind of make sure that the water is covering the rice, and then we will continue to pour water in as needed and then I will also add in the garlic butter mixture towards the end. All right now let's get to Tori's tips and uh, with the fried chicken and uh, whatnot so with that take it away Tori. Okay well first of all if you do not want to or can't use um, chicken for some reason either because you don't do meat or um, can't or whatever or just you feel like having a meat-free day you can use meat substitutes such as tofu or m even mushrooms to do this you will potentially need to adjust your cooking time um, to uh, allow for that but it is easily doable just use it like you do with the chicken um, also if you have gluten issues you can use a gluten-free flour when it calls for the flour you can as we mentioned earlier adjust the seasonings to your taste um, just don't go too heavy on it unless you really want spicy um, also if you do not have dairy you can use whatever milk you would like to as a substitute for the milk and the eggs are not actually required they are something that will help the coating to stick to the chicken while it's cooking but they are not actually a requirement and it will stick relatively well without the eggs so you can just leave those out if you are um, doing a vegan friendly version of this recipe all right so with that, now we will open it up to any kind of uh, question regarding uh, the whole shebang, or if you have anything you'd like to offer in addition, then now is the time. I've got the rice starting to cook now on the mm -hmm. stove. And uh, so, do we have any hands there? Yes, we do. Uh, first up, we have Heidi. Heidi. I guess I'm one of the usual suspects. You are. Um, but I think, Tori, I've heard you say before in substitute with eggs, you could use yogurt. I, I'm i not vegan or anything, but yes, I think you I've heard can, you say that before. You can, yes, you can use yogurt or a, um, like, for example, soya-based, though not all not only soya-based yogurt alternative as a substitute for eggs when trying to get stuff to stick to stuff. That's what I thought. That was all. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. Next um, up. Yep. That's all right. We have uh, Cheryl is up next. Okay. All right. Uh, Welcome, Cheryl. Back. Hold on. Cheryl, you're, you're mute. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. I don't know what's going on. Normally, my mute says uh, unmuted or muted, and right now, since I've updated Zoom, it's not doing it. I don't. I don't get it. But anyway. I, this is just a suggestion with the person in regards to a while ago that had was in a wheelchair. Uh, I was just it just for the moment when they mentioned that that I thought why don't why don't they get a rectangular table that is at the height of the wheelchair and they could you know put it next to the oven where you would open it and you could spread all your supplies and tools and everything out there that would be at your level to do that. It's a great idea if she has the space and funds to set that up, yes. And it doesn't have to be a fancy table, just a table, something that's just functional. Sure, sure. if she's got the space to set that up, then that's a great idea. Thank you for that tip, Cheryl. And also, yep. uh, speaking of pouring, and he mentioned he's eating, uh, spilled water. I've tried always, all, my, all these years, to not spill, and I finally just had to come to grips with myself. I'm going to spill, so just have a bowl or something underneath whatever you're pouring, or else do it over the sink. That's what her Very view is doing, doing it over the sink. <laughs> and yeah. also, like if I'm going to, uh, I mean, I'm a very country type cook. Uh, I, I love Campbell's tomato soup, for instance. Like when I put milk in it, I pour the milk over the sink and I bring the pan that I've emptied the can into and I have the pan adjacent to the sink right up against the edge and then I pour the milk into the can once I've poured it into the can from the carton over the sink, if that makes any sense. It does, yes. It does. All right. So, um, and then I, the other challenge I can just, I just want to go back to the whole wheelchair thing. I mean, you know, like, I mean, the definitely good at tip of the table. Um, of course, there's also, like, other issues, too, like being able to reach the oven and all that and um, space yeah. and whatnot, so. Without knowing hey, her. Google, stop. Without knowing her actual hey, capabilities. Hey, Google, Stop. Without knowing her capabilities, space in the kitchen, layout of the kitchen, it's kind of difficult to give exact advice. Yes, we can, we, we can give general tips, but uh, yeah, and you have to figure out what works uh, best for you. So, which is the case we have with a, everything. Sorry, uh, Tori. Uh, so we before have we get to more, hey. okay. So before we get to raise hands, just hold off for a second, guys, because as you heard, my timer went off. And so I've got to now take out the chicken and flip it, and then I'm also going to check on the rice as well. And um, also, Cheryl, forgot to mention with Zoom, I'm sorry that it is being uh, difficult for you with the meeting. And uh, meeting, um, I will be nice though and not talk about my opinions on Zoom and Windows in general. Suffice it to say that uh, it's very negative. Well, not completely negative, but. Um, I think there's room for improvement myself. Okay, so we're going to... I've got the chicken out, and I'm going to use a double-sided spatula and just kind of try to flip each piece as best we can. And I'm going to use my oven mitt so I know exactly where the tray is. And... Um, so let's get underneath this chicken and we're going to start flipping okay so with while i'm doing that let's go to our next question who have we got okay next we have miranda miranda welcome back thank you um i don't use the wheelchair but when y'all were talking about the height that made me um think about this and they're secondhand, but I'm sure you can get them at Office Depot and any office supply place. You can raise or lower about four feet by about two feet approximately, but wouldn't take up a lot of space either if you just work. Thanks for that, Miranda. All right. So, you know, it really sounds like, I mean, there's definitely a lot of things to take into consideration for sure there with the cooking there um, with a wheelchair for sure okay 
Do we have any other hands, Allison? Mm, not at the moment. Okay. All right. So I'm going to flip this there. I think I got all the chicken flipped, but we have to use our hand, my hands to really kind of tell. All right, some of these did not flip as well as they could have. And uh, some of them did. So I'm making sure that these uh, chicken pieces are well situated. Okay, that one definitely needs flipping. So, um, have not fully decided yet on what I'm making next week. I've toyed with the idea of revisiting Courtney Stroganoff, but uh, that's been done so many times that uh, you guys should have been listening to Courtney. So, um, we're not going to do that. I may if you do. I think to Courtney, then you can catch it on the podcast. Exactly. So, with that, what I think we're going to do, though, is I think I do want to do some kind of because I recently, you know, thanks to Colby, learned about the stew beef. And so I think I'm going to find I'm going to find some kind of beef recipe that I can do that would really make use of that stew meat, like uh, um, uh, what you uh, like a beef stew or something like that. So even that do is a my version of Colby's beef stew. That's an actually interesting idea. Oh. It's an interesting idea. I think we will do that. Colby's beef stew, because I don't think hers required a crock pot, and I think I even did say I'd make it at some point. You know what? I knew I hired you for some reason. Hey, Google! Set timer for 20 minutes. I know, I come in handy sometimes. Hey, Google! Set timer for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. All right, so, uh, Colby, I don't know if you're listening to this or not, but uh, your beef stew is uh, on the thing for next week. No, it will not be rabbit stew. It uh, will be beef stew, but... Uh, well, hers didn't end up being rabbit stew either. No, it did not, but it was originally supposed to be that. <laughs> We're just going to plan for the beef stew in the first place. <laughs> exactly. So. Well, you All are. right. I am, yeah. The cows get to survive more closer to you, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so this rice is doing good. Okay, do we have any other raised hands? Not at this time. Alright, so the chicken, could I could tell, really needed a lot more time than... Well, it needed, to have, it needed another 15 minutes anyway, so that's what... It, but I... I think it's going to need the full 20 minutes, so that's what I'm doing. Chicken thighs can also take a little bit to longer to cook, too, sometimes in chicken breasts. So um, we will see how that turns out. Okay, so next week it's going to be beef stew, then dill pickle soup, and then I think Deb is our guest for February. It was, that's yeah. correct. Yep. Right, so... Yep. And then in March, it's an Italian theme. We've got spaghetti. We got uh, well. Do, do pizza. you want to do it in, in, in well in order? It's first, it's Diane with the Italian sausage. That's right. Then pizza. Then spaghetti. Because we're doing pizza on Pi Day. Yes, we are. And um, based on some of the questions I've gotten a while back in regards to cutting and uh, whatnot, I have. Actually, spoken to Cindy about that, and she is uh, interested in coming back to maybe uh, do a demonstration of that. And we're thinking about like a full panel of uh, things you can do for different cooking techniques. So um, we'll she even recommended one of the Christmas. April. Yep. And uh, but if that's a panel you might be interested in participating in as well, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll see what we can arrange for different. Uh, cooking 
tips and uh, like I said I think it might be interesting I don't know if there's enough to do on cooking with multiple disabilities and uh, how you can you know how people with uh, multiple disabilities besides blindness or if there's only a small amount of um, people giving tips for each thing we could even do thing that can bind yep. both um, we'll Tony, I don't know if yeah, Tony, I don't know if you're still listening or not, but you could definitely. I know you can uh, could tap into that blindness and more call of yours as well, and uh, you know, let's see, see if there's anybody you can recruit from uh, that that uh, might be willing to. Um, you know, we're not asking for anybody to do one whole long presentation. No, just you know, I want to see what we can get gathered together, and um, you know talk about things from working with limited resources to just, you know, like that tip that was given earlier about, you know, extra time to prepare, that type of thing, because, um, yep. yeah. So let's go check on the rice again. In the meantime, happening now, the neighborhood coffee clutch. <gasps> I got it right. Yay. You must be getting sick. I must I mean, be. You, you got up early, you knew what the date was, and you got it right that it was a coffee clutch, not a breakfast clutch. Yes, something I mean, is if completely... If you guys got a talking thermometer, maybe you should check your temperature. I think I should, and we do have a talking thermometer. But uh, it might say that I'm hot, you know, because I've been slaving away in this hot kitchen here, so... Yeah, that's true. It, it might give false readings, but uh, well, yeah, wait until you cool down from, do, from cooking the dinner and then, uh, well, breakfast for you. Um, and then uh, once you've done that, maybe you should check that to make sure you're not getting sick. Yes, you're right. And by the way, guys, if you're worried that chicken is not breakfast food, well, first of all, what is a common breakfast staple? Eggs. Where do eggs come from? Chicken. And this one has both chicken and the eggs, so you don't have to worry Does about which one comes first. There's also another thing, and that is that breakfast is breaking fast. So technically, the first meal you have of the day is breakfast, no matter what you eat, because it's the meal that's breaking you fast from the night. Exactly. So, um, you know, don't 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 let uh, you know what we just determine as breakfast food is. Yeah. Plus, it depends right. on your culture to what's actually considered breakfast food, because some stuff is considered breakfast food in some countries that isn't in others. And, you know. Yep. I, what I still want to know is why will McDonald's serve breakfast all day, but they won't serve lunch all day? Wait a that, minute, that your means. McDonald's served breakfast all day? At least they used to, um, but... Uh, I was never I has. They stopped serving breakfast. They literally, they will only serve breakfast between... Uh, I think it's about six or seven they start until half past ten. Only breakfast. And then after that, it's only the other stuff. Hmm. Well, um, we need to talk to the UK McDonald's and they need to make some changes. Although they do hmm. do one thing that yours don't that makes ours better. What? Because they cook their um, potato products separate from their chicken nuggets, their potato products are vegan friendly. Well, technically, okay, so we have somebody unmuted over here. Um, and technically, ours is supposed to be that way too. But it's not um, done. Really? It actually, okay. it, they actually admit to it on the McDonald's website. That they Interesting, because. I remember a lawsuit over that very issue back in the 90s over the uh, oils that were used for their french fries, so... Yeah, well, know, right? now because they admit to it, they're, they're actually in the right because they're giving a heads up. <laughs> Alright, well there you go guys. Um, some things you now know about McDonald's. It's a good thing I don't eat vegan friendly currently or I might have been in trouble, but... Uh, well, considering the fact usually you have some kind of chicken sandwich or burger or something from McDonald's anyway, I'm pretty exactly. sure that going vegan is a, a question. Oh, there. it's the, you know, the, the issue is not being vegan friendly. It's supposed to make me feel good thinking that I'm eating something that's healthy-ish along with the unhealthy. So there, no. there's the psychological component that uh, they're uh, overlooking there too, but you know, I'll, I'll live. Um, all right, but I wonder. So, so you get a trade-off. You don't get breakfast anytime you want, but you get vegan-friendly fries. So, 
interesting. Let me see how that works. All right. Oh, we also get butter that's being dropped, but. Uh, so I'm now adding in butter to the rice, and we're going to stir in some garlic powder. And we're going to have us a garlic like rice. Mm, yum. rice. And we've added in a little bit more water as well. Um, garlic powder. And you can, of course, add any kind of seasoning you want to rice. doesn't have to be garlic powder. But garlic powder works really well. And it's... It really does. Yeah. And... Um, all right, do we have any other questions? Yes, we have a couple of raised hands now. And first up All is right. Diane. Diane. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks. Thanks very much. Um, I, think, I think McDonald's stopped serving all-day breakfast probably around the time of the pandemic. And even okay. when they did, even when they did have it, they didn't have everything. There were okay. only certain things you could get. Fortunately, one of them was the egg McMuffin, so Joe liked that. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Joe, that they no longer do your egg McMuffin all day. My um, my question, Herbie, is because I'm not sure if I heard you doing it. Um, I, I wondered if you could go over again how you flip the chicken. With a do I use a double spatula, and um, so I, and I hold like the cookie sheet with my uh, using an oven mitt. So that's how I flip it, and then I just kind of feel the chicken, and then I also give it enough cool time to that I, that I could use my hands afterwards to kind of make sure I'd flipped each piece. Um, what I really cool. should have. Yep, let it cool a little bit. What I should have done is actually used an extra cookie sheet and done two cookie sheets with less instead of one big one, and that would have actually made them cook a little bit better. And if they still don't cook fully, then I can always still transfer some of it to a secondary cookie sheet and let them cook even longer. But... Uh, and we still keep hearing someone's draw, so if people could, um, when they're not speaking, okay, stay, stay muted until... Allison calls on you, that would be very much appreciated. Yep. Okay, thanks, Toby. I'll do it now. All right. Who is next? Uh, next, we have Tyann. All Diane. right, we go from Diane to Tyann and across country, no less, too. So. <laughs> yeah, and the last one. I'm that. So. Oh, you're okay. you're uh, very it. far away. Have you got. Um, Oh, I don't there know. <laughs> well, whatever you did there uh, did help. So. Okay, well, uh, so Lois at, came down and was like, what are they cooking? And I told her, and she's like, mm, that sounds good. <laughs> and, <laughs> Excellent. Um, and uh, you're making pizza on Friday, which is also Lois's birthday. Oh, yep. Well, happy birthday, Lois. Uh, even though you laid down the law, it. Uh... Well, actually, that was where I got the idea for us to do it on that particular day because mm -hmm. I remember Tyann mentioning it and that um, she was saying about them having pizza for Pie Day because I believe somebody in the household is not a fan of pies. Yeah, well, she just admitted last night that we could have apple pie on the birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. so thank you for the idea. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And Cheryl has her hand raised. All oh. right, Cheryl. Uh, okay, it was uh, something I was wanting to give you all a suggestion about, about the flipping. Uh, that can be a, a tricky little procedure itself. I like the double spatula that I got at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. It kind of has the top of it that goes over the top of the food. The bottom part is flat, you know, and kind of like a square, but the top is sort of like a U-shaped. And you put your item inside there. But what I do, since the food is obviously hot, I get a fork, put that fork in my left hand, put it on the item that I want to 
uh, flip. Then I put my right hand, because I'm right-handed, I open the double spatula and put it underneath the food I want to flip. Then I remove the fork, or either I can hold the fork on, say, the chicken, and then use my wrist to flip it like that. Because what we do is we flip with our wrist. Yep. Mm. Does that make any sense? It does, yes. yes. Okay, because like... And, a, and the double unlike, spatula is actually what Herbie uses. Uh-huh. But I just wanted to say, I know you mentioned putting your mitten on, and so you burn, burn your hand. I was using my mitten to hold the cookie sheet in place. Right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always concerned about trying to find the object, you know, because it seems like it'll... So fly. with one hand is where I find the object, and the other hand uh -huh. is what I was using to hold the cookie sheet in place. You and have to um, find the method that works for you. I can find, you know, like the edge of the thing, like you said, but... Sometimes the item wants to slide around on the spatula, unless I don't have the right kind of double spatula. But if I hold it with the, instead of, it, of put my, touching it with my skin, I don't want to burn myself. I just get a fork, hold that in place, and then flip with my right hand. That's a great so, idea. Thank you, Charlie. It is a great idea. One thing I will say for me personally, I'm just very tactile. And so I really like to, is... I mean, I will use forks, and I definitely use, like, double spatulas to flip and all that. And I'm interested in that U-shaped double spatula that might hold stuff a little bit better on the top. But part of my problem is, is this, sometimes I just trust more what my fingers are telling me more than anything else. And I, that's not that's not always a good thing, but... There's also the fact that, um, as you heard me pointed out, he did give it a few minutes to cool a bit first, um, so that he could safely do that without burning himself. Yeah. That makes sense itself. Yep. But thank you, Cheryl. Yep. Thank you for the tip. And so, you know, like I said, so, some people are just, I, I, I don't know, I just don't do well with third-party things giving me feedback. Some people might find the fourth method, yes. Yeah, some people might yes. find the fourth method easier, but I personally do the same kind of thing as so, yeah. yeah. Fingers were the first created tools. Exactly. And does that mean maybe I get burned a little bit more? It does, but, you know, um, unless it's a real serious burn, like I have had a couple times, but not because of that, then uh, I can move. Okay. Just run so. it under cold water and you'll be, you'll be fine. Exactly. And your fire okay. is, alarm is being sensitive again. It is. Okay, so we're going to turn the rice down and turn to some of it was starting to stick to the bottom of the pot, so I was making, adding in extra water to make sure that it doesn't. Okay. Do we have any other hands, Allison? Not right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what is, let's see, it is currently, uh, it helps if I look 16. at the right side of the phone. Okay, so we've got about 14 minutes left. Okay. And, and now we have a raised a hand. Oh, there you go. We have a raised hand. Okay. Go ahead. Heidi, you can unmute. Hey, Heidi. I don't think that's the specific timer you want to go off, Herbie. <laughs> no, he's got a very sensitive smoke alarm that goes off with the least little thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, I, I was not using the smoke alarm as a timer. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, just making sure. I, I had one of those that literally any time we used the cooker, it would go off. It was really, really annoying. It also kind of depends on where it's positioned, too. Well, that was part of why it would go off every time because where, because we had a small kitchen, they put it just at the kitchen doorway kind of thing. And yep. um, with it being a small kitchen, it was like literally a couple of feet away from the cooker. So we'd open the oven to check on the food and that was it. Or we'd be cooking something on the stove, bit of steam would go to it. That was it. It was off. And Herbie's sounds like it's almost as sensitive. <laughs> so yes, next week it's Colby's Beef Stew. And, uh, but in the meantime, some other great calls happening today. For instance, we have Unmute Presents. That's going to be at 1 Eastern, followed by Abacus Made Simple. The Homophones Call. If you've not had a chance to check that one out yet, you should. Because it is a very good call. Mary does an excellent job of uh, keeping... So, 
Uh, you guys are still hearing me, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So switching to portable things. So what was the last thing that you all heard? Um, my timer just went off, by the way. So we're going to see. I how think the last thing we heard was your smoke alarm, Harvey. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> the much. The last thing we heard was yep. you saying about Colby's stew next week. And there was other yeah. calls yeah. going on. And you said about, I think you got as far as the homophones. Yeah. <sighs> okay, fine. So all that stuff I just said for nothing. So first of all, quick reminder that uh, we've also got some other things happening today. We've got the what's going on with Twitter call tonight at 7. I realize that most of you are going to come on to that call, not because you actually care about what's happening with Twitter. You just want to know how am I going to make a call out of that uh, particular subject. And so if you know all about the Twitter kerfuffles, I don't know if you're going to learn anything new, um, but uh, the it's going to be part of it me lecturing and part of it uh, just uh, answering uh, questions that people are going to have. And uh, so that's how I'm really going to approach it. I will also mention for the record that it was not my idea for this call. It was somebody else's. So if this call turns out to be a flop, I will give you their information and you can blame them. If the call, however, turns out to be a success, <laughs> I will end up taking full credit for it. So that's okay, unfair. There's something you could actually cover in that call, if you would, that would make it a huge success. Um, the question people are asking me the most about Twitter is, because I think the actual Twitter is reasonably accessible, but the question yes. I get asked the most is, is there any way they have reordered the way you get your timeline so that it's by what they think you should see? And the question is, is there a way to get it back to be just chronological? Yes. So if on your home way, button. If you can answer that, you'll have a successful call. So <laughs> I can answer that real quickly. On your home screen, there are two buttons at the top. There is Save a... Save it for uh, the call. Make people come to the call. <laughs> Oh, but Deb's a busy woman. I she have to go to the time. BOP meeting tonight, well, so I actually well, can't. Text Deb the answer and make everyone else come to the poll. Well, I was going to be nice, but okay. Tori says I yeah, can't okay. be nice. No, that's cool because because I there, just there's, want There's you. a follow. It, it's a real simple answer. There's a follow I think button I actually, at the top of your screen. Okay, got it. Yeah, um, I'll go look for it and show it to my husband. <laughs> but he, All right, but see, people have see, asked. See, see, that's been my other dilemma because I run, to, you know, because it's also with Bits, you know, the fourth Tuesday I run an iPhone, you know, class. And I was debating, do I want to save the actual, I'm thinking about doing two parts. I'm thinking more about just generally talking about Twitter tonight and then doing the Twitter app demonstration on the fourth Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Or do I give people a, tw a demo of the Twitter app? Why don't you be app? ready to do the demonstration? And if you run out of people wanting to talk about the thing go too early in the call, then you can. Yeah, because I think the demo yeah, is really valuable. I agree. I mean, that would make too much sense. Um, I know. It's you just can't that do on this call, I do really cover. different calls. You might do it both times, Kirby, and I think you'd get a different. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, do it. Um, the one thing, though, I do have for any Windows users, because, you know, this is not my strong forte, are there any Twitter apps that you use? Like, for the Mac, we can use the official Twitter app. And I just go to the I well, they're all going away. That's the problem, is all the Windows apps are, are Twitter right. is locking out. The, so, so you, I didn't you can still that. do it for your browser. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. So. And that's how I've been doing it on the on the on yeah. Windows anyway. Windows, yeah, yeah, is in the browser. That's actually the easiest way to do it on Windows. Yeah, I agree. Oh well, Tori, you just volunteered yourself. No, um, no, I didn't. Anyway, oh, <laughs> you're right. I volunteered you, but uh, no, because the, 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 the reason why I didn't want to do a full on iOS demonstration is I want to include all aspects of Windows and Mac users as well. But yeah, I think that's a good point that I would have a an. Um, I could do a more focused iOS demonstration the fourth yeah. Tuesday that's intended yeah. for the yeah. iOS and audience. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. 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 But today I'll just cover the basics from several different angles. So, All right. That's what we're going to do on Twitter, guys. Um, welcome to the planning stages of tonight's call on Herbie's Cooking Corner. <laughs> So I did take the chicken out of the oven. It uh, looks crisp. I will let it cool down for a couple minutes more and then I will go test it out. But uh, 
we are gonna have chicken and uh, rice. So real refresher, real quick guys, is for the fried chicken, this was all done in the oven. I didn't actually pan fry it. So we used crushed corn flakes, flour, uh, salt, and pepper in one mixing bowl and then in another mixing bowl, egg whites and milk. And you dip the chicken in the egg white milk mixture then in the flour cornflake mixture, and then you place it on a cookie sheet with the nonstick cookie spray. Bake for 15 minutes, flip, and bake for 15 to 20 minutes more. And uh, we will have talked about alternatives and stuff. Remember, guys, the email contains some valuable links for today's email and every Tuesday's email. You have the uh, link to the Dropbox folder with all the recipes. We also remind you about uh, the ACB Cooks list that you can subscribe to. Just write to community at acb.org. Give them your name and email address. Ask to be added to the list, and they will um, do that. And then we post these recipes to the list as well. Yes, and the I YouTube do. channel. Yep, Tori does a great job of that. And then the YouTube channel where uh, I do post these calls. And there's also the podcast feed as well that ACB Media has where... You can find a lot of these calls over there as well, too. I have honestly not checked it to see how updated it is compared to my YouTube channel, but I my advice is look at both because there's probably some calls that are on the podcast feed that are not on the YouTube channel, and uh, there might be some calls on the YouTube channel that are not on the podcast feed. So that's why it's a good idea to look at both. And uh, it's a YouTube play. It's a playlist within my channel, actually, one of several playlists I have um, because I also do Mac demos and things like that. So I try to offer a wide variety of resources that you can all tap into. I'm going to thank you, Twinkling Tori, as always, for co-facilitating. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Deb, for streaming. And thank you to everybody else who's listened or participated in this call. I appreciate every single one of you even if I don't know your name. Or, uh, thank even you, if Harvey, for doing this in the first place. Well, you're welcome. And um, with that, we're going to say goodbye. And so Kayla and Allison, you may end the rooms.